one if. Yeah, I got that. I got that. Shalom and welcome to another installment of Apostle GMS giving all praise to you. by Shem Shai. Today's topic is going to be entitled Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. We're live streaming right now and I'm uh, putting, I'm getting ready to put the uh, monitor on, the big monitor on so we can see what we look like. Right, go ahead, Ak. Con. Yeah, because, um, the, you know, these, um, there was this uh, article. It was actually a web page that I was reading. I mean, I didn't really get a chance to read it. It's just something caught my eye. I had sent it to Apostle Tahar. And uh, basically, you know, they were saying that, uh, I, I, I forget, it was 550 BC or 550 AD or something like that. And that's supposedly when Esau was supposed to have been uh, eradicated. <laughs> you know, so I, I, got, I got a good chuckle out of it, but I never got a chance to go back and look over it. You know, but you no, know, they're 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 uh, doing that because they're trying to uh, say that that Esau doesn't exist anymore. So how could they be the so-called white people? You know, but everything that you read in the scriptures about the characteristics uh, and the prophecies and certain things that Esau would be doing, they all they don't fit nobody else on the planet but the so-called white man. You know, so that's why that's why um, these devils. They have these seminary schools and they have these um, colleges you go to, you know, uh, are set up and, and, they, and, and they're the ones that dictate to you what you can use, what books you can use and what resource you could use or what material you could use and what material you can't use, you know, because they're trying to control everything. But the most high didn't, didn't uh, uh, sanction that. No matter of fact, the Lord said, this is in the book of... Uh, just bear with me one second. This is the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter, the third chapter. Like I said, bear with me one second. Uh, this is 1 Corinthians, chapter 3. And it uh, should be, I think, verse either verse 18 or 19. So uh, bear with me one second. Uh, 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 18. Let no man deceive himself if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world. Why? Because Paul himself was wise in that world, you know, the world of Israel at the time. You know why? Because he was a Pharisee. You know, he was taught under Gamaliel. He had a prestigious name. He had a, a prestigious uh, background. He had a prestigious uh, uh, um, education, you know. So he said, look, if you think that you're wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. In other words, you got to put all that stuff away that, that, you, that you've that you learned. You, ha you have to unlearn what you've learned. Why? Because when you come into this knowledge, your mind changes. You become a, a new man, you know? And it says, for the wisdom of the world is foolishness with the Most High. See, so the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the Most High. Now, when you go back during the time of the Apostle Paul, you know, you had... You had the Jews that were, that had a curriculum, and a, and a a, a school, uh, um, the House of Scrolls, that that they would that they would that they had set up, in order for people that were out there that were masters of of the scriptures, masters of the Torah, masters of the Tanakh, they they had to have letters, they had to have learned these letters and 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 this this uh, way through other men that were th there before them. But when uh, uh, Yahweh Shai came on the scene and the apostles, they didn't go to those different schools. Why? Because the Lord is not dealing with these schools in general, period. You know, because they, they, got, they have the Bible, they have the book that you need, they have, the, they have the vital book that you need, but they don't have the information or the knowledge or the spirit to uh, be able to break these scriptures down. Because they're not prophets, they're not part of the elect, you know. So that's why, you know, with the situation with uh, um, uh, Vocab Malone, he did that, uh, that, um, that, new, uh, um, that new video, um, what's it called, uh, Hebrew Israelite History, 
uh, the, the fractured 90s. You know, he made that that video and there were two individuals that were speaking. Uh, one of the main speakers, I remember his name was Kadash. The other one was, I think, uh, Faithful to God or something like that. And the guy that's, that said he's faithful to God, he said um, he said that 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 when when he when he breaks down certain scriptures i'm not quoting verbatim when he breaks down certain scripture, scriptures he breaks them down according to accepted exegesis 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 you know now when the, when i heard that the first thing that i thought about accepted by who you know yeah that's that theological bs most i didn't set up no theological seminaries all right and the guy kadash or kabash i remember the dude Good boy, you remember him, man. He used to come down to the camp on 125th Street. He's kind of like remind me of a of a blue, kind of like the same big guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You he, he well, he he knows me. But when they mentioned me, he said, "No, nah, I don't got no problem with the ha." And uh, you either loved him or you hated him, you know. And that's true. That you know, he he knows. I remember the dude. I remember when he won a TV. They had a raffle, and he and he won a big TV. He got up. Yep, that's me. I'm the winner. I told you I was going to remember that, brother. Anyway, you, you, um, when you came into the truth, you basically said concerning the Gentile issue, um, you said, uh, that they told you that it's talking about Israelite foreigners, right? Well, if you understood the scriptures, you would, there's people in Israel to this day that still can't get around the Gentile thing. And we, we still, we, we still, doing the uh, con continuous series on Gentile versus Gentile, but we just change it up. But it's in the same spirit, J Jacob and Esau, Gentile versus Gentile. If you, if you really understood the scriptures, you would, you would see it crisp, crystal clear, but you don't see it. And that's why eventually you fell off. You know, you still think you're in the truth, but you fell, you fell off from the true man of the most high. You mentioned it. Thing about King uh, Marshall being King David, when it was told to me, I said, "Yeah, okay, yeah, he's King David. <laughs> what else are you gonna tell me?" You know, and that messed a lot of uh, uh, people up. And you came into this thing not you 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 believe, but not mixed with faith. Give me that scripture real quick. Hold that on deck. See, that's why a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys, have went back into the world, and a lot of you guys are watching these videos, man. And a lot of you are going to be destroyed. All of you that turn your back on this truth, you're going to be destroyed. The book of uh, Hebrews 4 and 1. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. That's why when all them spits came after the year 2000, you had God, Israelites just went and did their own thing. And we were the ones that kept doing, like after 96, 97, we were out there on 34th, wherever in Harlem, preaching that word. When there was no, there might have been a, a, another camp or two out there, but it wasn't like the 90s. It wasn't like the early 90s. Because a lot of them guys lost faith, especially after the uh, year 2000 thing, which is a beautiful thing. Because guess what? When the year 2000 came, it tested your faith. And so, well, the year 2000, when the kingdom's not here, your, your, your mindset was to go back into the world. Your mindset was to say, well, this is all bullshit. And some of you guys went back into the Christian church. Some of you guys went back to just being Negroes. Some of you guys became Moors. Some of you guys became uh 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 you got into the black consciousness thing some of you guys went back into the what you know what you was into before and that's all documented in the scriptures that's right that's right yeah so you know that's that's what they 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 basing that off you know i mean they they said a lot of things in that in that uh um in that uh hour and 30 what 34 minute uh video you no, know, going into a lot of the history and, and certain things, you know, like uh, one thing Vocab Malone spoke about, I believe it was either him or Kadash or, 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 or however you pronounce his name. Uh, and they mentioned about the, the 400 years 
uh, in the book of, of Genesis, you know, that you suppose, we're supposed to be here in America for 400 years. That's not, that's not what the scripture is talking about. I believe it was either, I think it was Kadash. You don't know the scriptures, man. That 400 years is talking about Egypt. It's not talking about, like I said, you got a lot of Israelites out there that claim to be teachers, and the Most High is not dealing with them. I'm not sure if he's, I'm sorry, you got something? No, no, no. Go ahead. Make no, I said I'm not sure if he said it himself. He was breaking it down that way, or if he said it of other Israelite groups that were breaking it down like that. You know that they're trying to say that that, that now since 2016 uh, is here, at 2000, what is it? 2019. When the bulk of the slave was what? 1619, right? 1620. That's what that's what they they're trying to say. I was going through that this morning. Matter of fact, let's go to that. Um, uh, Genesis 15, start from one. Cause you still got you still got people out there that's teaching that you know and, and that and that's and that's not true. Uh, this is the book of Genesis, chapter fifteen. Just bear with me one second here. Fifteen and uh, I just uh, fifteen and okay one, Genesis chapter fifteen and one. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying. Fear not, Ab I'm sorry, Abram. It says, uh, saying, fear not, Abram. Khan. Uh, the word Abram comes from the Hebrew word Abba Rum. Abba means father and Rum means exalted. Exalted father because Abraham was the first uh, of the line of the uh, 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 fathers of the promise. He was the head one. He was the exalted one. He's the one that the most I exalted. It says, uh, fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. About the star of David, or you know the the shield of David. He's the most. I said he is your shield. It says and Abram. Abram said, uh, "Yahweh, Yahweh, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and and my and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus?" And Abram Abram said, "Behold, to me thou hast given no seed." And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the, of the Lord came. You know what he meant by that? One born, in my, one born in my house is my heir. His servant, Eleazar, was a faithful servant. He was the one that went out and got um, Rebecca for, for uh, Isaac. So this guy, was, he was going on long journeys, and he had servants under him. And he had money. And he could have left Abraham, but he was a faithful servant. And Abraham loved this 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 individual man and this man was he was born he was born in his house so he was raised up to be a personal servant under um under uh, abraham man you know and behold the word of the lord came unto him saying this shall not be thine heir but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir that cuts that the children come from women and he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now to, toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. That seed, Abraham had eight sons altogether. He had Ishmael, his first son. He had uh, Isaac, his second son. And that's the son that received the, the blessings, the most blessings. And then he had six other sons by Keturah, after uh, uh, Sa uh, Sarah had passed, he had six more sons. So it's not talking about all of them. That's why when you go to uh, uh, Romans, the ninth chapter, it breaks it down about the seeds. Not, you know, it's not talking about all the seeds of Abraham, but that line that came out of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or uh, Isaac and Jacob. That's what it's talking about. So, re so read that again. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the, in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And that means he had faith in the Lord. That's what that means. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of, the, out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land uh, um, to inherit it. 
And he said, Lord, power, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one or uh, one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. Now this is the Lord in a vision uh, given uh, Abram the confirmation of, of, of the promise that he made with him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. So that four hundred years, as as you read on down, it was not talking about. That's not talking about America. That was talking about during the time of Egypt. All right. It says, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and that happened with the plagues that the Lord uh, brought upon them, and eventually destroyed that whole army. It says, and afterward shall they come out with great substance, and they did. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. I got but a in, precept for you. Okay. Uh, you mentioned about 400 years. Uh, Exodus 12 and 40, it says, Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Now we know the first 30 years that was Joseph, and Egypt wasn't afflicted then, or Israel wasn't afflicted then. Uh, and it came to pass at the end of... Of the 430 years, even the self same day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. Now, the th first 30 years, uh, Israel was in, you know, basically in peace in Egypt. Now, the last 400 years, that's when they were afflicted. They were afflicted in, in, in uh, hard bondage. It tells you that in the book of Exodus, the first chapter. Matter of fact, let me go there. How they uh, they made uh, taskmasters. As a matter of fact, I'll read it. Exodus, the first chapter. Uh, yeah, Exodus, the first chapter, the seventh verse. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies. And, and they're multiplying right now. Yeah. With all these different camps. Yep. Oh, yeah. And and uh, Esau is getting scared. In particular, Esau, they're getting they're getting afraid, man. Um, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore, did they set over them taskmasters. Now, this is after the thirty years. This is when they, uh, Israel started becoming uh, afflicted. <laughs> Therefore did they set over them taskmasters. What's a taskmaster? A slave master. To afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities. Python and Ramses. And uh, those treasure cities, that's the pyramids that you see today. It was Israel that built that, man, in slavery. During those 400 years. Reading on, it says, But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. So that's pretty much it. And that was during that 400 year period. Now, the first 30 years. That period was not a period of slavery. That was during the Pharaoh that 
new Joseph. That new Joseph, right. And then when, then you had another file come up uh, behind that one. Yeah. They said, look, these people are getting big. They're going to come yeah. up against us. Yeah. You know, they're going to start, you know, trying to say they're, they're the bosses. So that's why that happened. But it happened because of prophecy. That's right. And that Pharaoh, by the way, um, uh, his uh, uh, daughter was uh, Joseph's uh, wife. And Joseph had two sons with that, uh, that Pharaoh's daughter, Ephraim and Manasseh. Just as a tidbit, as a side note. That's it. Okay, uh, going back to Genesis 15 and 15. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And this is a main uh, clue because the Amorites were Canaanites. You know, and that land of the Canaanites was the land that the Lord promised. And that was the land that Abraham, a Abram was actually on, you know, when he was having this vision. So it says, uh, and it came, so that 400 years was talking about the 400 years of the affliction in the land of Egypt. It says, and it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. And the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites and the Kenizzites and the Cadmonites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Rephaims and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Girgashites and the Jebusites. So all of those nations right there, which are all Canaanites, were dwelling in that land. And that was the land that the Lord promised. But what? But the problem was that they still had wickedness that they had to do before the Lord can, can uh, give uh, uh, the land to Israel. Quick precept for you. Uh, the book of Acts 7 and 6. And I believe this was when uh, 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 Stephen was given, that, uh, given the, uh, this account. And at the end, he got stoned and he was uh, put to death. Uh, anyway, this, this is, he was going through the history. And this is what he said, Acts 7 and 6. And the Most High spake on this wise, that his seeds should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years. All right? And as a matter of fact, indeed, that was a strange land because even Moses named his son Gershom, which Gershom means uh, uh, Goshem. Uh, uh, name a foreigner or, or foreign name because he was born in a foreign land. All right? Yeah, That's it. Come, come. So that, you know, the, that uh, lets you know that that 400 years that uh, the Lord spoke of to Abram or, you know, who later, whose name was later changed to Abraham, which means uh, Abba Raham, which means father of, of, uh, of a multitude, uh, uh, that did not happen that's, that that happened in Egypt. That didn't happen in America. That's not that's not talking about the. It was it was talking about a future prophecy from the time of Abram, but it wasn't talking about America. You know, just just so you know. All right. So, the um, the the lesson is, you know, Esau is the end of the world. So um, what's happening right now is is that there's uh, prophecies being fulfilled. You know, even as we speak now. To bring a close to this devil's uh, kingdom. Yeah, I want to just kind of go to the beginning. Go to Genesis 25 and 19 and read that. Okay, Genesis 25. All right, so this is uh, the book of uh, book of Genesis, the 25th chapter, and um, the 19th verse. It says, And these are the generations of Isaac, Abram's, Ab Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah uh, to wife, the daughter of Bethul, the Syrian of Padanaram, Khan. You know, so this is going back to the origins of, of Esau, the so-called white man, of where he, where, where he began. You know, because there's a scripture, I believe it's in the Apocrypha, that says, as all things have a beginning, they have an end, if I'm not mistaken. But if I find it, I'll bring it out. Yeah, this is uh, the title is uh, is based upon the scripture. 
Uh, second Ezra is uh, six verse. Uh, I'll start at seven. It said, "Then answered I and said, What shall be the the parting asunder of times, or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning beginning of it that followeth?" And he said unto me, "From this this whole this whole big movie, you know, it's what is it." 14,000 year movie however, however you want to break it down it all it all um it all comes down to Jacob and Esau and Esau is in the power seat right now that's you so called white people and Jacob are the Israelites that you see on the streets and on YouTube it says uh it says uh eight verse it says and he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac and we just read about Abraham in, in Genesis 15, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So ultimately, when Esau go, when Jacob comes into power, that's when Esau has to uh, go down. Jacob is not in power. So Esau has to be in power. Let's read on. Um, it says, um, it says, um, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethul, the Syrian of Padanaram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. Oh, I was going to read this. I was going to read this. Jump down to the 20th verse, right? It says, and, th and, and this is going to be manifested, right? It says 20th verse of the same chapter. It says, and when the world that shall begin to vanish away, <clears throat> what world? Esau's world. For when, and when the world that shall, uh, that shall begin to vanish away, Esau's world, world shall be finished, then will I show these tokens, signs, the books, shall be open before the firmament <laughs> thank you youtube <laughs> and they shall see all together the books are open because how do we know that the end of esau is coming when these books are open before the firmament i got a quick precept um second is nine and four uh, started at five for like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end and the end is manifest even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs and that's what you see in all these effects and signs taking place those are the prophecies being fulfilled you know so so the lord said when when before he gets here there's going to be certain things that are going to be taking place on the earth. You know, there's going to be earthquakes in diverse places. There's going to be wars, rumors of wars, uprising of the people, uh, on famines, you know. And, and you're seeing that all over the earth. It ain't just in America. It's all over the earth. It's all over the planet. You know, situation down in Venezuela, you know. Now the uh, UN can, can, uh, has been approved to, to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, I don't know if it's arrest or, 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 or detain or beat down, or kill, kill America. There you go. They kill Americans. It's been approved, you know. So everything is, is. These are all the effects and the signs that the Lord spoke of, you know. All right. So going back to uh, uh, Genesis twenty-five and twenty-one, and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebecca, his wife, conceived, meaning she got pregnant. Excuse me. And the children struggled together within her because from the moment that those two spirits were near each other, they were fighting. You know, there was a struggle. Why? Because that was that was good versus evil. That, that were the two opposing forces that the Lord set up on the planet to, to one re to represent righteousness and the other one to represent uh, wickedness. It says, and she said, if it be so, why am I thus? So why is this going on in my stomach, in my womb? That's what she said. And she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. So okay. there were two separate nations from these two children 
we're going to come two separate nations yes precept for you God. yeah you mentioned about uh those two spirits fighting God. against each other um uh, and this goes back to uh uh the the curse that the lord put on um uh the the lord put on the serpent which indeed was uh esau back in the garden uh this is the book of uh, genesis 3 and 15 well let me start at 14. and the lord power said unto the serpent because thou has done this and this was really esau or um, you know esau the the father of the edomites uh the lord power said unto the serpent because thou has done this thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field and upon thy belly shall thou go and thus shall thou eat all the days of thy life now here's the, here's the point and i will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel so there was always that hatred all right thy seed i will put enmity between thee all right which would be uh esau and the woman which would be uh uh jacob all right i'm just looking up the word enmity the hebrew word there is uh ayaba ayaba i i'm sorry yeah ayab ayaba or ayab ayabha ayabha it says uh enmity hostile mind and that's what esau has towards jacob to this very day they have a hostile mind towards us they'll never <laughs> they'll never really they, they weren't built to accept us and and in reality if we're in our right mind we're not built to accept them right. there will never be a, a, a integration so how the hell is that going to change in the kingdom yeah. how's that going to change the lord say he don't change right. he put that enmity from day one it's always going to be there right. you got it brother okay uh back in genesis 25 and 23 and the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Yeah, remember going back to what uh, was written in Genesis. That's what that was, was reincarnation, man, done all over again. The Lord said he's going to put enmity between thee. He was talking to the serpent who later uh, came back in the, on the planet Earth as Esau, Edom, with that curse of leprosy. And the woman, the woman represents Israel, in this case, Jacob. The Lord said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed, which his seed would later be known as Esau, Edom, the wicked, if you will, and her seed, the seed of Israel. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Right? That's right. That's right. And, um, and when you go back, I'm going to read that part again. It says, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. So the Lord said that these children, they were going to pre pretty much they were going to be two totally different spirits, two totally different uh, um, uh, entities. You know, they were going to be like, as, like, as as far as day is from night. You know, as far as righteousness is from wickedness. And then it said that they were going to be separated. That's why they can't be. That that's why they, no matter what what. Uh, uh, any of these so-called leaders do they can't integrate that they can't bring the, those two together because the lord set it up to where there was going to be that division it says and the one people shall be stronger than the other people and you see that you know the so-called negro latino native american indians are physically spiritually and mentally stronger than you edomite you so-called white people you know and and then you know when you see those strongman competitions a lot of those guys are, are jakes they just look like like white like white boys and you're gonna you're gonna you, a lot of you you're gonna be in for a rude awakening when awakening when you find out that a lot of those white looking dudes that you thought were crackers are really uh, uh, uh or edomites you are really israelites you're gonna you're gonna bug out it says um and the one people shall be stronger than the other people and the elder shall serve the younger and that was already set up from the beginning that esau was supposed to serve or be a slave to uh jacob 
So when Jacob, uh, uh, whose name is uh, Yaquab, which means supplanter, when he supplanted uh, uh, Esau for his birthright and his blessings, it was already set up in the spirit that that was going to happen. Uh, it says, and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Now the word, the reason why he called his name Esau was because when, when uh, Isaac saw what 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 the son looked like when he came out, he came out almost like he was undone, you know. So he called him Aisha or Aishashwa, which the word Aishash means wasted, and the Y at the end of a word is is he. So wasted away is he. Why? Because his pigment wasn't a, as the regular uh, pigment of 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 the uh, people of color. It says, um, and after that came his brother out and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And it didn't mention anything about Jacob's color because Jacob came out like a, like a regular uh, uh, person. Yeah, I got an uh, example to back you up. When, uh, because Miriam received that curse. And here's the example here, the book of Numbers 12 and 10. <laughs> it says, and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle and behold, Miriam became leprous. That's what, that's what the so-called white man has. He has leprosy, leprosy of, of, of the skin. Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not, lay not the sin upon us. And it's fitting that Esau should receive that complexion because he's the man of sin. Yep. <laughs> is he not the man of sin? Yes, so, so the Most High put a covering on that man of sin, man. The, the Most High put a covering. And, and Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin. So it's a sin to look like the so-called white man, all right? He's supposed to be a hunk. He ain't no, not in the sight of the Heavenly Father. Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, <laughs> wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. And notice he didn't put it on uh, Aaron, but he did put it on Miriam. Uh, let her not be, here's the point, let her not be as one dead. And that's what the so-called white man looks like, as, as, as one dead. That's why he ain't got no soul, he ain't got no, no rhythm, you know? Let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And that's what happened with Esau. That's why when, when Isaac seen him, he said, Ashashua. So what the hell happened to his flesh? What happened to his pigment? But he was made that way because he's the man of sin. He's the wicked. Uh, it yeah, says, if you don't believe it, you, you, <laughs> you ain't meant to get it, man. All right. So this word, you know, I, I, I was thinking about it this morning. This word is really only for the prophets. The most high in the past dealt with the prophets. He's dealing with them now. And then everybody ain't a prophet, man. Yeah. And this, and this, this and this, this, this truth, that's right. This truth here, you know, is not something you go to a seminary school to learn. You know, you, you get it from the men that the Lord uh, set up before you, and, and the Lord opens up your mind once that word goes out. And if you are part of the elect, it's going to take root in your spirit, and you're going to learn it and understand it and teach it. Yeah, when Yahushua was in the temple, he was 12 years old. Yep. And he was confounding all those older older men. Yeah. They went to learn schools, right. and Yahushua was confounding them. Right. What seminary school did Joseph and Mary send him to? The spirit is the spirit because he was a prophet back then. He's, it's all spiritual, yes, man. Right. The spirit quickeneth. The, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words I speak unto thee, they are spirit and they are life. That's right. So, that man, we, we could go on for, for days with that topic. Yeah. For that same topic. It says, uh, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they call his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she, she bare them. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. That's another clue. Yeah, red. You so-called white people are not white. You're red. You're different shades of red. 
You're not an off-white. You're not a beige. You know, you're not a flat white or dirty white. You're red. You're different shades of red because your, your, your skin is translucent. And um, that blood shows, the red blood that we all have shows forth through your, through your translucent skin. And when it said when the baby was born, what Arya, high priest Arya used to teach, they said, the baby came out red and hairy. Yeah. No, the baby wasn't hairy, all right? Nope. The, it said the first came out all over like a hairy, red hairy garment, right. and they called his name, what do they call him? Esau. They, they said he was, he, he was, uh, he was wasted. Just like you read the scripture in Numbers 12 about Miriam. That's how Esau, she was a, obviously she was a dark-skinned black woman, a dark-skinned woman, and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. Okay, all right. Well, so you can't get around these scriptures, all right? You can't get around these scriptures. That's Esau right. is still among us today and in the power seat. <laughs> and, and just because you put Barack Obama, that puppet up there in office, that doesn't mean the black man or black man ain't ruling a goddamn thing. Because all you people, you, 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 um, if, if let's say this man was actually ruling, he was actually in the ruler's seat. He'll have all you Republicans destroyed, man. There would be no Fox News. They talk shit about it. He ain't my president. Well, he can just he can just send out a sec, you know, some secret uh, a police and destroy you. If he was really in the power seat, wouldn't just like Esau? If Esau was in the power seat, like like a, a Trump, if he became the president and he was truly in the power seat, he can he can pass out secret orders to kill Mexicans, right? Or to kill blacks. So that's all bullshit. Barack Obama is a puppet, just like all the rest of them puppets, man. Yeah, I got the account dealing with a, a all you dummies, all you stupid asses in America, you getting you they going they going to drop the the most I going to drop the bomb on you, man. You have <laughs> you have no idea what the most high is going to do to you. This place is getting ready to be destroyed. And if you do talk to the media, all you got to talk look, we're the Israelites, you so-called white people are the Edomites, all right? America is Babylon the Great. The name of the Most High is Yahweh, and the son's name is Yahweh Shai. And, and this place, Babylon the Great, is going to be destroyed by way of thermonuclear destruction by the Russians. And the, and the, and the, and the Lord's coming back, and, UF, and so-called UFOs, to destroy this place and to deliver the elect. And after that, you go into slavery. That's and it. you're an Edomite. That's, That's all you got to know. Yeah, you don't become all friendly with them. and yeah, and, and just, yeah. just, just jerk off. From uh, uh, ISUPK, yeah. we're going to have our own. we got to be separated. We're going to have our own. What the hell are you talking about, Negro? <laughs> our, our black people, we're, we're going to have our own states. and yeah, uh, no we're going. Do, do, you, do, you, do you know how stupid you sound, man? Do you know how stupid, absolutely stupid? <laughs> the only ones that have this truth are the, the starting from the apostles on down of great millstone you got to talk to the media like my man moses moses gun uh in the movie uh uh the great white hope <laughs> how much you know <laughs> did he slam that that's how the prophet a real prophet would come man he wouldn't come all condescending and and nice and and you know he'd, he'd, he'd come rough man and you know what you don't have to talk to the media any no way. I gotta say, Jake, I was gonna say you don't gotta talk to the media, no way. We already got the media, we already got our platform, man. That's we right. don't, need we don't need no platform. We don't need that media. We got our platform, man. That's right. Yeah, we don't we, just so you know, media, we don't need you. All right. Um, because the scriptures say the prophecy said this knowledge is gonna cover the earth like like the waters covered the earth during the flood. So we we you know you know this this word is gonna get out there. Um, the book of Exodus, the fourth chapter, the sixth verse, and the Lord said furthermore unto him, and he's speaking to Moses, and he was about to show Moses his power. 
put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. What color is snow? White, right? Meaning the, the pigment from his hand was, was wasted, just like uh, uh, Esau was wasted when he came out the womb. And that's you so-called white people. You are wasted. That's a curse. And that's a curse because you're the man of sin. Whether you accept it or not, it's the truth. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it became again as his other flesh. So what color was Moses? He was a dark-skinned man. He had pigment. The so-called white man does not have pigment. He passed for an Egyptian. All right? That's why you, 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 you put that sunblock, number 98, sunblock 106, because you're trying to get that pigment, which you know inherently you're supposed to have. All right? This is uh, Isaiah 34 and 4. Um, sorry, 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia, which is the Greek way of saying Edom, and upon the people of my curse to judgment. What curse was that? The fact that the Lord stripped them from their pigment. That's a curse. That's it. That's it. So going back to Genesis 25 and... Um, uh, Salakia, uh, 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. Now, that's another clue of who Esau is. Yep. You know, you, all them hunt, hunt, you know, when you see them hunting uh, uh, shows, the majority of those people are what? Edomites, so called white people, so you can understand. A man of the field, and that's what they are. They're always out there in the fields. You know, they're always, you know, hiding in the woods, you know, uh, uh, um, hunting. Um, camping out there, more, you know, a lot of a lot of times, and Jacob, Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. It says, and Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his vegetables. Back up what you're saying, Genesis 27, 27, and we're gonna read Genesis 27 after he get get finished with that. It says, uh, uh sort of 26, and his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son, and uh, he. And he came near and kissed him, because back then they kissed their fathers. Men kissed men. There wasn't no homo shit, all right? And he, and, uh, he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. So that proves that Esau was a man of the field. Now, Yahushua said in the parable, he said, the field is the world, right? The book of Psalm 17 and 13, beginning at 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked. That's another title for Esau, the wicked, which is thy sword. And that's another title for Esau. He's the sword of the heavenly father. From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world. Right? <laughs> From men. Now, who's the man of the world? Esau. Esau. He's all over the world, man. He's in everybody's business, sticking his nose into affairs that don't belong to him. Uh, From men which are thy hand, O Lord. From men of the world which have their portion in this life. You tell me that ain't the so called white man. Sure, ain't talking about us Israelites. We ain't got our, our portion in this life, the, the majority of us. And the ones that do, the scriptures say, warn to you, you have received your consolation. War means destruction. And they, even though they get their portion, they die what? They die penniless. Right? And they still got to kiss Esau's ass to get that portion. Okay? For men of the world which, is, which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure, they are, they are full of children, and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. And leave the rest of their substance to their babes. Again, that's describing the so-called white man. How they pass down, like take for instance the Rothschilds. How they pass down their legacy from generation to generation. And what color is the Rothschilds? So-called white people. All right? So they're definitely the men of the world. You know? 
I'll read it again. Um, Psalm 17 and 14, from men which are thy hand, because they're the hand of the Heavenly Father, the hand of the, the, hand of the Heavenly Father in wickedness. All right? Uh, o Lord, from men of the world, and that's the point, which have their portion in this life. That's it. You, you got it, brother. So uh, back in uh, Genesis 25 and uh, 28, and Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, uh, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. That's where he got his name Edom from. For, for I am faint, therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. So basically, this, he went he went hunting. He didn't catch nothing, and uh, he was he was starving. And he asked Jacob. Jacob was cooking, and he asked. Well, according to the book of uh, Yasha, <laughs> the, the, you, know, you want to know more about the book of Yasha? Go ask my man Bubble Eyes for car. Um, he got into a ran into a, a Nimrod in the, in the field, and they got into a fight. And he had to kill Nimrod and his two servants. And he was running because there was other servants coming to get him. And that's why he was faint. So you want to go ahead and follow uh, Elder Ricard, the GOCC, you go right ahead. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? So pretty much he, he, uh, um, he, Pretty much, he uh, uh, it was a, another word, but he hate, pretty much hated his birthright. He had he had no regard for it. Is that for you? Yeah, come. Just to to uh, line up with what you're saying, the book of Hebrews 12. <laughs> the book, <laughs> the, <laughs> it, it must be read. The book of Hebrews 12 and 16. It says, hey, like Elder Apostle Todd said, I think it was a week or two ago. He said, man, just teach the scriptures. Anytime you do some yapping, yeah. then you, the scriptures will be in your mind. Con ba, 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 you know? Just teach the scriptures. And, and I got a new, well, it ain't new. I'm taking it from Dragnet. I'm taking the cue from Dragnet. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. That's what Sergeant Friday would say. Just the facts, ma'am. Because you'd have these guys, they'd go into a rant. and they, Well, you see, is this happened and that? He said, look, just the facts. Hey, well, these are the facts, man. The biblical facts. Uh, Hebrews 12 and... And uh, Hebrews 12 and 15, I'm sorry, 16. Least there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. And Apostle Elder Ramlab is reading the account to you back in Genesis. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he, for he found no place of repentance Though he sought it carefully with tears. That's it. That's right. Uh, back in Genesis 25, 33. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. So pretty much he despised it. Yeah, and he took advantage of it. He took advantage of his Because the blessing was supposed to go to the firstborn son. But the most I set it up. Let me turn this down. The most high, the most high, go ahead, say, say what you got to say. Uh, says, uh, then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up and went his way, and thus Esau despised his birthright. Yeah, he despised, he hated his birthright. So you gave it up, but it was set up in the spirit, because Vocab Malone said to one, one he's in one video, I don't watch all of them, um, that, that, uh, Jacob stole Esau's birthright. If you want to say it that way, yes, he did. He set him up. He supplanted him. That's what his name, that's what Yaikwa means. It means it's a plant. Nomen omen. So ultimately what he did was he set him up to get his birthright. But this guy gave, he didn't, he didn't value his birthright, man. It wasn't important to him. He wanted to get something to eat. So he said, here, take, the, take, take this damn birthright. I don't need it. So that was that was plan that was uh, uh, a of uh, 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 the plan. You had uh, uh, plan A and plan B, right? That was plan A. Then you got plan B. You had to, he had to go deceive his father through the help of his mother. 
And we're going to read that. Is there more to that, or should we jump to 25? Okay, so let's jump to 27. Okay, uh, Genesis 27 and 1. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau, his eldest son, and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him. That was a plot. He set up Esau, and now he's going to set up his father. So if you want to say he stole it, yeah, he did stole it. But who was with, who was with him stealing that? The, the, the Most High, the Supreme Yahweh. And, and, and uh, 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 Isaac's uh, uh, wife, Re Re Rebecca, which loved, which loved Jacob and hated Esau. And ultimately, the Most High loved Jacob and hated Esau. And Yahweh Shai, which was Isaac, all right, he loved Esau at that time because the Most High set it up that way. So who does who does e Jacob who does uh, Isaac love now? He loved Jacob and hate Esau, and he's coming back to destroy, and he's going to prove it in a big way. He's going to destroy him. You cannot get around it. I don't give a damn how many scholars you line up and go on. Uh, the, 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 we're going to go into the did decay and uh. Yeah. The uh the 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 um the G Geneva Bible is a is, is a very good translation. We, look, we can go to the Geneva Bible. I read through the G a lot of the brothers are reading through the Geneva Bible. So thanks a lot, Mr. White or Dr. White. Hell, we're gonna we're gonna start reading from the from the uh, uh um what's what's I just mentioned the Geneva Bible. Yeah, the back of El Apostle Isaiah, the sixty third chapter. Beginning at the very first verse speaks about how Yahweh Shai is coming to mess up Esau. It, it says, who is this that coming from Edom? And it's talking about Yahweh Shai. Yeah, and there was a greater purpose because that, that purpose goes back to the beginning, before the children were even born. That's why Paul uh, uh, reiterated that when he was breaking th things down in the book of Romans, the ninth chapter. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Romans 9 and 19. Thou will say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? Here's the point. For who have resisted his will? So if his will was for Jacob, um, Esau to uh, sell his birthright to Jacob, that's what's going to happen, man. And that's exactly what happened. That's right. So it was all destined from the, from the beginning. Uh, this is the back in Genesis 27 at the end of verse 1. My son, when he said unto him, Behold, here, I, here am I. And he said, "Behold, now I am old. No, not and I. Sorry, I know not the day of my death. Now, therefore, take I pray thee thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison, and make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die." And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau, his son. So it wasn't a coincidence that Rebekah happened to be there and, and heard this whole situation because the Most High used Rebekah to, uh, to set up Isaac through, through her son uh, uh, Jacob so that Jacob could receive the blessing because it was already set up in the spirit that way. When you go back to before they were even born, there was a purpose. The Most High had a purpose. It says... Um, and Esau went to the field to, to hunt for venison and to bring it. Yeah, that's the most high theater. Done. It's like watching a movie, yeah. you know, and, and that word theater goes back to the Greek theos, which means what? God. So that's his theater. That's his movie. Done. It says, and Rebekah spake unto Jacob, her son, saying, behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat. And bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I commanded, what I, what, that, I, that which I command thee. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. So she set the whole thing up. So, so she 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 was such a such a bad cook that she took some goat meat and made it taste like venison. You know, majority of black women today can't even boil water. And, and you other tribes too. Some of you women can't cook for shit either. And thou shalt bring it to thy father that he, that he may eat and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man and I am a smooth man. 
My father peradventure will feel me, and, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and shall uh, bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son, only obey my voice, and go fetch, fetch me them. So the Lord had a heavy spirit on Rebekah at this, at this moment. And he, and he went and fetched and brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory meat such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with, uh, with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids on the goats upon the, the hands and upon the smooth of his neck. Because this, 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 this caveman was, was hairy as hell. And she gave, because he had hair coming out of his back. And she gave, and she gave the savory meat and the bread. Years ago on uh, Esau, I don't know if we, we did it in the studio, I did it by myself. But every time I went to upload it, I think it was part three. I went to the part with the hair and it showed, I had all, I had about, I had about 20 pictures of Edomite that was all hairy and shit. And every time I brought that up, they, they cut it. Put it up like three or four times, and they, when it got to part three, they cut it. Huh? You know, so this truth is getting the Esau. They can't get around it. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, "My father," and he said, "Here am I. Who art thou, my son?" And Jacob said unto his father, "I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou ha uh, had his." Betis me, arise, I pray thee, uh, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy power brought it to me. That was plan B of the uh, deception. You know what I'm saying? That was plan B of the crime of the, of the uh, out, not century, millennium. You know, it's so easy to fool men back then. Isaac, even though his his eyes was dim, he was still perceptive. Yep. It says, and Isaac said unto unto Jacob, "Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not." It wasn't so easy to fool men back that's then. Right, he, that's right. He still, <laughs> he still part of him men. said, "Nah, I don't, I don't think this something don't lay right." Right. And Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, as his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. As I would say, Harry! Well, wait a minute. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Jacob lied. He said, look, he, he supplanted his own father. Not only did he supplant... I guess, we, I guess we're going to slavery. Yeah, yeah. He's going, most are going to say, no, nah, Esau got it. I'm yep. going to give it. You, do you really believe that, my man? <laughs> okay, <laughs> do you believe that? Yeah, Jacob, he told a straight-up lie. He lied to his father, Isaac. He said, yeah, I'm that Esau. Was that was that a was master that, plan. Yeah. The biggest master plan that ever been laid on somebody yeah. was that, that Esau don't... See, that's man. <laughs> what, what, what's that? Uh, uh, there's a there's a series. Uh, Corruption in America. Something I forget the name of the series, man. These Edomites and they have the music in the background, and they say this Edomite. He's like a real estate guy, and he rips people off. Well, that story should be on that TV show, man. It'll come back to me, man. That's that's the very nature of being a serpent. You know, wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, you know? Uh, and he said, bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and, and said, see... The smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. Therefore, the most I give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. 
Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. Curse be everyone that cursed thee and blessed be he that blessed thee. So that, that was, that's the blessing, you know, because it said that the elder shall serve the younger. Name of the show is called. It's a series. It's called American Greed, right? Well, this this show right here should be called Universal Greed, yep. hey, because that was a master plan, man, to get Esau. But Esau didn't want it any goddamn way. We read it in the scriptures. He didn't value it anyway. He didn't value that piece of paper. So you lost it. But it was all set up by the spirit of the Most High any damn way. That's right. Easy. He's the author. It's like when you watch a good movie from the very beginning, you can tell it's going to be a good movie. How do you know? Because the plot, the plot was being was being uh, built up. You know, the the plot in the movie was being uh, built up. That's how you knew it was, you know it was a good movie, or it, it's going to be a good movie. And that's the same thing we're reading about. This, this is a real good movie. You got it. All right. So it says um. Oh, well, you know it's a good movie, movie because look at all the cast of characters, man. We got the Edomites. We got James White, Dr. James White. We got Vocab Malone. We got Apostle Tahar. We got Apostle Gabar. You know, we got the FBI. We got Nate. You know what I'm saying? Hey, this is this is the big, hey, this is the big, this is the biggest movie ever made. And this movie is the longest movie ever made, man. And you in the movie. Can't write all of the full, you know, cast members because there's too many to name. Well, hold up, the movie's so big, you got people that died years ago. People get, getting born, dying. This is like the ultimate mini ser series, man. That's been going on for thousands of years. All right, uh, back in verse 30. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, man, that Esau's brother came in from his hunting. And he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, let my father arise and eat of, the, of his son's venison that thy soul may bless me. <laughs> Yo, man. And Isaac, his father said unto him, who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it me, and I have eaten of all before before thou camest, and have blessed him? Yea, and he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry, and said unto his father, Bless me, even me. You got to get some good actors. You got to raise back up. Uh, uh, what's the guy that played a man called Horse? Richard Harris or... Yeah, but but he but he can play Esau, you know. Like when he found out, you know, well he could play as an old when he was young, you know, or when he was old he could play uh uh he can play Isaac, you know. But somebody got to play Esau. You got to get a good actor to play Esau, and he's got to cry, man. Read that again. Well, he might be a Jake, you know. He, could, he might be a Jake. Yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> and the sky goes up, you know. Oh, you can play. Uh, 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 uh you can get my man. Uh, was the guy that played in um, um, this guy. Uh, he played in Titanic. Uh, the main guy, Leonardo DiCaprio. But he's a Jake. But the best actors are Jakes anyway, you know. It says, and and when Esau heard the words of his father. He cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry. Man, that wasn't just no regular cry. Yeah. 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 yeah, no. He said, and he and, and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came with subtility. That's what his name means. Jacob means supplanter. Hey, to su supplant someone. You have to use what? Subtility. Yep. And that's where you get the, uh, the uh, serpent. Be wise as a serpent. 
Muhammad says a dove. He came with that Simeonite supplantation. Because right. in Simeonites, they will rip you. Boy, I'll give you, I'll tell you but based upon experience, man. They will rip you all five ways from Sunday, man. If Simeonites, the mechanics boy, they will rip your ass off, man. They'll change one spark plug and charge you for an engine job, man. If you if you're not smart enough. I've seen that done. They'll change one. You got a bad spark plug. They'll pull out as an oil file spark plug. They'll change that, hold the car for a week, and tell you that they, they did an engine job in it and charge you like $1,500. And have taken away thy blessing. And he said, is not he rightly named Jacob? Now, even Esau knew. For he hath supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he had take but because you was a man of no integrity you gave up your birthright right. you was hungry man you should have just took it you just you should have starved man right. you should have fell down on on that birthright and died with the birthright man right. that was important to you but you 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 screwed it up my man you screwed it up that's why you mad at us now you screwed it up and you got us back you got us right now but we're gonna get you back it's all about Jacob. It ain't no mixed vocab. What the hell are you talking about? It ain't ain't about no mixed multitude, man. It's about Jacob and Esau. That's right. That's why I said that Esau. And two, and two people can't be on top. Two nations can't be on top at the same time, man. Esau is on top. When Esau goes down, Jacob's gonna be on top. It ain't gonna be a mixture. You got some Jakes work. They work it, working it out. Ain't no, ain't no working out, man. Uh, what is that? Jeremiah 30 and 16. It says, every one of them shall go into captivity. That's in the prophecy. It didn't say some shall go into captivity. It says, every one of them shall go into captivity underneath the nation of Israel. Je uh, Jeremiah 30 and 16. Yeah, and before they were even born, it said that uh, the two nations shall be separated one from the other. It says, and behold, now he have taken away my blessing, and he said, has thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants, and with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. So, man, he was, woo. Yeah. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Now they're getting that blessing now. Yep. They're, they're living out that blessing now. Right. The, how did they get That's right. Through the sword. Through the sword. Well, it's going to tell you that That's as right. you read on. And by thy sword shalt thou live and shall serve thy brother. That's how he got his blessing, by the sword. That's right. The fact that you're all over the world... And you have occupied, really, you have occupied the whole world, all right? You have what they, we read this a couple of years ago, there's documents that there's over 800, almost 1,000 uh, U.S. military bases around the world. You got NATO, you got the EU. Um, and how have you maintained your power? By force, by the military. You always send in the military. And that, that was a blessing that Isaac, Yahweh Shai, coming back in the reincarnation, all right, gave, he gave you that blessing. He said, you're going to be blessed. You're going to get the land. You're going to be able to take over all these nations, but you're going to do it by way of the sword. Yeah, and then when you go back uh, to the time of uh, uh, Cain, you know, uh, one of the uh, Cain's uh, um, uh, descendants, his name was Tubal Cain, which means traveling weapon, traveling a traveling mercenary. And that's a traveling weapon, a traveling mercenary, which that's, that same spirit that was in Cain and in, in his descendants is the same spirit that's in Esau and his descendants. It says, And by thy sword shalt thou live and shall serve thy uh, brother, and it shall come to pass when Wait a thou... Minute. Um, Christopher Columbus, Cristobal Colon, did he not make a statement yeah. when he was conquering? It, right. it says... Con, it says... And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And that happened during the time of uh, Second Kings, the eighth chapter, one of the kings of Judah, 
there was a revolt. Esau revolted from under their hands, and that's when they, the Edomites freed themselves. Uh, what is it? Second Kings. Second Kings. Yeah, because the, you know these Edomites that, that read the scriptures and 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 they know somewhat of that history. They'll say, "Yeah, you know, well, you got us now, but we're gonna get you later." And it, it, it ain't it ain't working like that, my man. This is our Second Kings eight and twenty. In his days, Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah and made a king over themselves. So Joram went over to Zaire and all the chariots with him, and, the, and he rose by night and smote the Edomites, which compassed him about, and the captains of the chariots and the people fled into their tents. Yet Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. Then Libna revolted at the same time. You know, so that was when Esau had, uh, um, separated himself, liberated himself, so to speak, from under the hand of Judah. And they had their own kings and their own sovereignty for a certain period of time. All right. So going back to Genesis 27 and 40, it says, And by thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Uh, did you, you find that quote yet, Apostle Gabar? Okay. It says, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. Man, because this, this devil was, was, was upset big time. He had nothing left. And these words of Esau, her eldest son, were told to Rebekah. And she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, uh, purposing to kill thee. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, and arise, flee thou to Le Laban, my brother, uh, to, to Haran, and tarry with him a few days, and thy, until thy brother's fury turn away, until thy brother's anger turn away from thee, and he uh, uh, forget that which thou hast done to him, then I will send and fetch thee uh, from thence. It says, Why should I, I be deprived also of you uh, both in one day? And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of, of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life uh, do me? You know, and that was, that was like, it was true. It, it was to get uh, Jacob away from, um, from uh, uh, Esau, so that he wouldn't be able to kill him, and also to set it up to where where um, uh, Isaac, uh, I'm sorry, where uh, Jacob got his wife, you know, because that's when he went among Laban and he had served Laban for for uh, Rebecca, but he gave him he gave him his uh, older daughter Leah, and then afterwards he gave him Rebecca. So that that's killed two birds with one stone, so to speak. You know, uh, did you have some possible ball? All right, so that those are the that's the Genesis. Uh, the origin of Esau, uh, which is the father of the Edomites, as it tells you in Genesis 38. Let me get that real quick. I'm sorry, Genesis 36. Uh, Genesis, the 36th chapter, I believe around about the 8th verse. Um, let me see. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is um, Isaiah 63, verse 1. It says, and this is when Yahweh Shai comes back. Matter of fact, you know what? Before I go into that, I want to read this here. Bail me for one minute. Okay, uh... Okay, uh, Ezekiel 35 and 1, it says, Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir. That's the dwelling place of Esau. And prophesy against it, and say unto it, Thus saith Yahweh the Most High, Behold, O Mount Seir. And it's talking about the people. I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. And ultimately, ultimately, that's talking about Babylon the Great, where the daughter, the daughter of Babylon, 
is uh, now in power. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh, because thou has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel. Why did the Mosai say he's going to destroy destroy his, um, Mount Seir or the people of Mount Seir? Because of their perpetual hatred for the children of Israel. And why is that? Because the children of Israel are the children of the Most High. They're the chosen elect of the Most High. Read it again. It says, because thou has had a perpetual hatred, an everlasting hatred, and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by force of the sword. What did Isaac, Isaac gave Esau the blessing. He said, he, you're going to have to bless him by way of the sword, right? In the time of their calamity and the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Most High Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood. And this didn't happen yet. And blood shall pursue thee, saith, uh, see, uh, see if thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Seven, thus will I make Mount Seir most des uh, desolate and cut off from it him that passes, passes out and him that returneth. And I will fill his mountain with his slain men. And this didn't happen yet. And thy hills and in thy valleys and in all thy rivers, all they all they fall that are slain with the sword. So this is going to be the most high sword sword. It says, I will make thee perpetual desolation. Perpetual means everlasting. Desolation, that's you get the word desert from desolation. So it's talking about Babylon, the, the, the daughter of Babylon. It says, In thy cities and not re, and shall not return, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh. Okay, now let me go from there to Isaiah 63 and 1. It says, the few, these are all future prophecies. So this nonsense about uh, Esau was already done away with, Where, where's the information on that? Huh? Where did it take place? What year did it take place? Because it says when they're done away with, it's going to be during the time of, uh, of uh, all the Israelites, the two kingdoms coming back together. And that didn't happen. It says, uh, uh, Isaiah 63, verse 1. It says, Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? Bozrah, Bozrah, Bozrah is a principal city of, of Esau. Now that represents Babylon the Great, which is America. This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Another word, redeem. That's Yahweh Shai. So did Yahweh Shai come back? Or when he was on the scene two thousand years ago, did he did he come through Bozrah, and his and his, and his uh, garments be, was dyed red? It didn't happen yet. So if he didn't come back and do this thing to Bozrah. That means Bo Bozrah is still around. The physical place is in ruins right now, but B Bozrah is, is, is referring to the Edomites. Two, wherefore art thou red in thy apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the wine press alone. And the wine press is talking about this place right here, Babylon the Great. And of the people, there was none with me, for I will tread them. I will tread them, the people of Bozra. I will tread them in my anger. 
and trampled them in my fury and their blood. So we know it's not talking about the place uh, called Bozrah. It's talking about the people of Bozrah. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. So we know that that wine press is talking about what? You're the, you're the grapes that, the, that Yahweh Shai going to trample on. Is he going to physically do that? Is he going to physically come down as a giant man and start stomping on you? No. It's parabolic. It's talking about him bringing this destruction. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and, and I will stain all my raiment. This is, this is parabolic talk, and this is a, a future prophecy, which, mean it did, which means it, did, it hadn't, hasn't taken place yet. Four, for the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed. What does it mean by the year of his redeemed? He's not just going to get vengeance. He's going to come and buy somebody back. He's going to buy the children of Israel back. That's what redeem means, to buy back. But the year of my re redeem is come. And I looked, and there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm. Now, when he comes back, he's, he's going to be accompanied by the angels. But he's coming in his force. They're going to be, they're, they're going to be in agreement with his force. That's what it means he's coming by himself. He's going to give out that oil uh, order, and, and they're going to do work. It says, uh, therefore, mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury, it upheld me. And I will tread down, I would, and I will tread down the people, what people? The people of Bozra, the Edomites. Sixth verse again. And I will tread down the people in my anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. And I'm thinking about Revelation. Somebody give me Revelation 12. Because really it's going to be a battle up, up in the heavens. So somebody get that. Yeah, this, this is the book of Revelation chapter 12. And I start at the first verse. Yeah, that's what they do in these churches, boy. They, they, they take scriptures like this and, and totally mangle them. Because they don't, they don't, they don't have the oil. It says Revelation twelve and one, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now that woman represents the nation of Israel, because the Catholic Church tries to say that that's Mary. That's not Mary. That's dealing with the nation of Israel, because it has the moon under her feet, which represents understanding. Uh, has a, uh, is she's clothed the sun represents wisdom and on her head was a crown of 12 stars those 12 stars represent the uh nation of israel now what what the lord was showing uh the apostle john was what happened to uh, uh israel back during the time of uh, when the flavian dynasty was in rulership yeah quick precept for you uh jeremiah 6 and 2 i have likened the daughter of zion to a calmly and delicate woman that's right Right. Just let you know that the Lord refers to Israel as a woman. He says, I'm married unto you. It says, um, and she being with child, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Because at that time, you know, uh, uh, Israel was catching hell. But Mary also was given uh, birth to Yahweh Shai in the midst of, of, of Israel going through all different types of, of, of hell back then. You know, it says, um. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. And that great red dragon represented all, the, all of Esau's empires from the beginning, beginning with the Greeks, all the way until, until the end of, of this devil's kingdom. So those are all the different empires of Esau that were going to rule, uh, like I said, beginning from the Greeks all the way up until today. All right, it says, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Now, the, the reason why it says his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, the tail represents the strongest part of the dragon. Now, the stars of heaven, it says the third part. 
because when you go back in the history around the time when Yahweh Shai was on uh, came was born on the earth, there was only three tribes that were really there, mainly there, which was the southern kingdom, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. So that was the third part. So that's what the dra the dragon persecuted though mainly those three tribes back then, which was uh, the Roman Empire. It says, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth because they were in subjection unto him. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And Herod was the one, the main one that, that wanted to put him to death because they were one and the same. Herod was an Edomite and the Romans were Edomites. And that right there proves to you that um, the Edomites are still around. So when did that, when did uh, Obadiah, the 18th verse, which is a chapter long, the 18th verse, uh, take place? Did it take place during the time of Yahweh Shai right before it? It couldn't be right before it. Because Harai was seeking to kill, have the Lord kill, the Messiah kill. So it ain't talking about then. And then let's deal with from 2,000 years ago up until now, the children of Israel, the two kingdoms didn't come back together. This is the time that the children of Israel, pursuant to uh, Isaiah the 10th chapter, 11 verse 1 down, how they're going to come back together. Matter of fact, hold that on deck, somebody. Uh, um, Apostle Kabar, just hold that. Matter of fact, just read it. Read it real quick. So you can't get around it, man. Uh, Isaiah, because if, if that's the case, uh, um, Herod is an Edomite, so how come he wasn't extinct, and his and his peoples? Uh, Isaiah eleven. Eleven and ten. Yeah. Isaiah eleven and ten. Um, and it shall. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. Okay. And in that day sh there shall be a root of Jesse, which that root was uh, David, which, which shall stand for an ensign to the people. And, and out of David came who? Solomon, which was the Harashai. To it shall the Gentiles seek and his... Yeah, the Gentiles is talking about the Israelites that was scattered among the Gentiles being called Gentiles. They're the ones that's really going to seek for this truth, all right? Seek to the Heavenly Father through his son. And a good example of that was Cornelius. Cornelius was seeking. That's why when Peter came to him, he threw himself at Peter's feet. You know he was seeking. And then Peter had to correct him. Peter said, no, uh-uh, get up from your, your feet. Cornelius reminds me of somebody I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Peter said, yeah, <laughs> just like a... <laughs> Uh, Peter said, uh, get up from your feet, uh, Cornelius. I'm here to give you a message. All right? And the message was, was about... Cornelius is an Israelite. Cornelius is Israelite. Co Cornelius is an Israelite. So anybody teaching otherwise, any camp out there, the Most High, Yahweh Bajim, Yahweh Shah is not dealing with them. Yeah, because when Peter made that statement to Cornelius, he said, you know how it's unlawful for a man to come to one of another nation. Now, when you go into Greek, the word there is alophilos, which literally means another tribe. Now, I don't tell you what tribe Cornelius came out of, but he was definitely out of the nation of Israel. So right there, Peter was telling Cornelius, look, you you are an Israelite of what tribe? I don't know, but you're an Israelite. Because the, the Greek word there is alophilos, which means another tribe. Okay, and we get into the Greek. You ain't, right. you ain't the only one that get into the Greek, James White. Talking about, I teach Greek. and I, 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 I. Yeah. Uh, so what? <laughs> yeah, so bloody what? And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and I already explained that, and his rest shall be glorious. Because the so-called white man, Esau, they're not going to seek for the knowledge of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. It tells you that in the book of Psalms, the 36th chapter. It says that the knowledge of the Heavenly Father and His Son is not in their thoughts. Tells you that clear as day. Uh, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set again, shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which the another word for the remnant is the elect. 
all right, the elect of the nation of Israel, who, by the way, when Yahweh Shai come, that's what he's coming to gather. What's the, what's the scripture for that? Matthew, the 24th chapter. He's going to gather his elect from the four corners of the earth. That the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. And he's, do, he's doing that now. Which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Paphros and from Cush. This is where all the Israelites are scattered. Cush represents Ethiopia. And from Elam, that's the East Indians, or the so-called East Indians, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. Now, a good example of that ensign is the fact that this truth is on the internet. That's part of that ensign. All right, Psalms, the 19th chapter, how the Lord say he's going to use the firmament, the firmament, roughly paraphrasing, it says the firmament show if the Lord's handiwork. This is the end sign. All right, not just us here at uh, even those other groups, which they, they, you know, they're not teaching the full 100% truth like we are, but they're helping to push that end sign because they're teaching about Israel. All right, they're teaching that the so called Negroes, West Indians, Puerto Ricans are the nation of Israel. And he shall set up an end sign for the nations. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. He didn't say everybody. It says the outcasts of Israel. And gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Now what the hell could do that? The internet, man. The internet reaches the four corners of the earth. The whole earth. <laughs> All right? Uh, that's, that's pretty much it. That's the point, right? That's pretty much it. What verse did you read? Uh, I I read um, uh, Isaiah 11 and 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall, okay. and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah, the scattered of Judah, all over That's the world. all the tribes, the two kingdoms coming back together. Come. From the four corners of the earth, because they're scattered all over the world. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. And who did Ephraim envy? Ephraim envied Judah. And, and that reminds me of Amos, where the Lord said he'll close up the breaches there. What, 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 what does the word breach mean? A differences. You know, they, I'm sorry, they even showed you that in uh, uh, Sanford and Son, how Sanford, which would represent a Judite, he had a problem with uh, 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 Julio. Julio represented who? An Ephraimite. There was a so-called Jew that put that whole series together. Showing you they know. And when they made that, when they came up with it, they really... It was supposed to be two so-called Jews, right? The 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 the, the, the Jews, son. Uh, huh? Stepped on son. Exactly. Right, right. 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 But then they said, "Well, wait." The the director said, "Look, the the people that put this together, they said, look, let's get some real Jews to do it because <laughs> they, they knew, know. they've That's been right. new, they, man. They, they, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart. That's why they don't put us on the major networks. If we're a bunch of clowns like they say we are, then put us on the major networks." And, uh, you know, they're not going to do it. Because we don't need the major network. No, I'm just saying. To prove we, we, the don't point. Need, we don't need them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't we need don't them. Need, you know, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. We don't need them, man. We don't we need the them. YouTube, yeah. man. The word's already out, man. That's right. They're putting you on the uh, news media now because they're trying to demonize you. Yeah, you this know? is all for demonization. But that's the point. They know that we know the truth. All, of, all the so-called good works that Nate did in IUIC, yeah. All the wonderful things they ain't do a news thing, yeah. but this guy does what he had to do, and they all focus of a sudden on he, that. yeah. they felt, that's what that's that's how Esau gets down. That's how he get down because he's the devil. He's the devil. Yep, that's how James White got down. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and the envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall, Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Like I said before, that's the two kingdoms coming back together. That's right. You, that takes you back to Ro Rojo. Why is that so hard to understand, vocab Malone? Huh? That's right. That Why is that so hard to understand, James White? That's right. Yeah, that takes you back to Rohoboam and Jeroboam. Rohoboam was a Judite. Jeroboam was an Ephraimite. And there was this big, big split. This there was big, a big yeah. split between the two. No, they, between they, the two. They, it's like um, they had like a hatred against each other. Yeah, we, you read about the history of the, the council where Roboam said, I'll take the council of the young men. And then Roboam said, um, I'll put more hell on, on Israelites with my pinky finger than my father put 
on the women with his loins. All right? So you go into the history. Uh, but they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines. <laughs> fly upon the shoulders mean they... So hold up. When they come together, what does that mean? <laughs> Are they going to be like the, 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 the flying Melindo brothers? Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And if you got the Philistine, they're gonna jump on it. No, it don't mean that. That means we're gonna we're gonna pounce on you. What does a lion do when they attack? Isn't Judah the lion? Yeah. From the prey, my son had that I have gone up. Yeah. Now our, our lions whelp. Anyway, you're gonna leap, you're gonna jump. Yeah. So it's gonna be a furious leap on somebody. You're gonna leap on them. Like a lion. Like a lion. Hey, yeah, we ain't gonna be flying like Sally Field, the flying nun. You could clearly see that was blue screen, oh, man. Yeah, she had Mike. Yeah, Sally Field, which she was sexy back then. You could, light you, Mike. Yeah, you could see why Burt Reynolds flipped like a IHOP pancake for her. Um, anyway, um, it says, but they shall fly upon the shoulders of, and like I say, ain't gonna fly like, uh, like that uh, uh, Sid Marty, Sid, Sid, and Marty Croft that. Uh, show the bugaboos, you know, at the very beginning, the English cats, English dudes, they flying the bugaboos and shit. You could see that was blue screen too. But they shall there be no blue blue screen when we jump on them. The era, ain't no blue screen needed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, red screen, as in red blood. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west, and the Philistines are them ashy. Stanked up to be damn ugly ass Africans, all right, which are not our people, them heathens. Uh, but they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west, they shall spoil them of the east together. Me, spoil me, we're gonna take shit, man. All right, that's what it means. We ain't gonna ask for it, we're just gonna take shit. Like you roll up on something and you take it, they shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab. What does that mean? Oh, yes, son, I got to tell you something. You didn't make your equal with me in the kingdom. No, they will not. Somebody lay their hands on you, right? Son. That's an assault. Yeah, that's yeah, an yeah. assault, that's man. That's what Esau charged What did he with. do? He laid my hand, he laid his hands yeah, yeah, on yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, man. Don't put your hands on me, meaning don't jack me up. That's right. So, we're gonna lay, we're gonna lay hands, we're gonna lay holy hands on Esau, man. Yeah, and we ain't gonna lay hands to heal you, man. We're going to lay hands on you to put you Fuck down to the up. ground. And that reminds me of Jeremiah 51. The Lord said, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. With thee will I break in pieces the other nations. That's laying hands, man. <laughs> laying hands. They shall lay their hand upon Edom. That's the so-called white man. And Moab. That's uh, uh, the so-called Chinese. And the children of Ammon shall obey them. Same thing, Japanese. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he take his hand, shall he shake his hand over the river and shall smite it in the seven streams and make men go over dry shod. And that's like kind of like a parable of the Lord coming back with those chariots with the angels, and it tells you in the prophecy, the slain of the Lord shall be many. So the Lord is coming back to kick some serious ass, man. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. And we know what happened there, all right? When Israel came out of Egypt, the scriptures say that the Israelites spoiled the Egyptians. I mean, we took every, damn near everything that they had. And since then, they've never really recovered, the Egyptians. They never became as great as they was at that period. Okay? You got these simple-minded niggas talking about Egypt, how great. Man, Egypt never recovered after the Red Sea, man. All right? That's it. That's, that's the scripture. I got something. I got something, Mark. All right, somebody right quick, go to Ezekiel 25, verse 12. And this is an, another, Ezekiel is a prophet. Prophets prophesy. The word prophet means to say something before it happens. Did this, what Ezekiel is prophet, uh, prophesying in Ezekiel 25th chapter, did it take place already? Didn't take place. 
It's about getting ready to take place. So somebody go ahead and read that. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 25, verse 12. It says, Thus saith Yahweh, power, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of... There goes Edom again. It says, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and has greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make it desolate from teeming, and they of the Dan shall fall by the sword. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord power. So the ones that's going to really uh, 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 exterminate Esau is Israel. We're going to exterminate them. Not, no other nation. You know, some people say he was destroyed in the Roman Jewish wars. The, 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 the uh, nation of Israel is going to be the ones that's going to destroy you Edomites. All right? Yeah, because the Khazars, they came on the scene around the 8th century AD. There's, man, I could, right now, I could go and find evidence, you know, uh, documented evidence that the Khazars were Edomites. Yeah. They were known as Edomites, the Khazars, which the so-called Jews derive from. The Rothschilds themselves. Yeah. So what are, what are you talking about the Edomites had done away with? I got a scripture, um, the book of Obadiah 1 and 18. It says this, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. What is stubble? When you light up some wood, when the, when the fire has its way with the wood, whatever is left, <laughs> that's the stubble. Okay? Well, that's how Esau is going to become. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. That's when they're going to be done away with, the house of Esau. Because you got that, that curse of leprosy. Okay? You, you're that man of sin. You got that curse. That curse is going to be done away with. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and that's Judah, that's the tribe of Judah, the south part of the land of Israel. And they of the plain, the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You guys, you got it. I don't know if you got the scripture. To keep speaking. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I don't know if you have a, another scripture. Right, um, uh, back to Revelation 12 and 5. It says, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Now, this this was then going back to, to uh, Yahweh Shai's birth. It says, And her child was caught up unto the unto the Most High and to his throne, which that's when Yahweh Shai was crucified and went back up to the spirit world. It says, and the woman fled into the wilderness. Then this woman, you know, uh, uh, which is which represents the the nation of Israel, which is really the three tribes at that time, fled into the wilderness, which is what the interiors of Africa, where she had a, because when you when you um, when you are, are going to this history, when when uh, the Romans uh, uh, the Flavian dynasty persecuted the nation of Israel. It was estimated that a, a, a great, a good portion of them ran down into the interiors of Africa because they mingled among other Israelites that were there. Yeah, according to the book uh, from Babylon to Timbuktu, uh, Rudolf R. Windsor, he says uh, over a million Jews fled out of the uh, land of Israel, fleeing into uh, Africa, in the interiors of Africa, fleeing Roman persecution. That's in the book uh, from Babylon to Timbuktu. You got it. Okay, it says, um, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of the Most High. So the place is talking about America. So there was a period of about 1,500 years when Israel was down in the interiors of Africa. They migrated over into the west, uh, west coast of Africa, and that's where the Arabs and the Africans, you know, which is the Ishmaelites and the Hamites, 
uh, sold them into the hands of, of Esau and br to bring them over here to this side of the world to serve slavery. Except for you. Uh, Luke 21 and 21. Then, then let them, well, let me start at 20. And when you shall see the when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Now it's talking about 70 AD. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. And that's what they did. They fled into the interior parts of Africa, the north part, predominantly the north and west part of Africa. And then some of them fled into, uh, some of them even fled to Asia, going toward the east. And some of them fled to the West, going towards uh, Spain and uh, uh, Portugal and, you know, those places there, France or, you know, Britain, as far as Britain. Uh, then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. So they made their home where? Predominantly in the north and west part of Africa, like you said, for about... 1500 years until the slave trade uh, started with uh, the so-called Arabs and the so-called Africans getting together to sell them to the so-called white man. And the, the account for that is in what? The book of Joel? Joel, the third chapter. You got it. It says that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And that was a period of uh, 300 and uh, f uh, was it 350 years? You know, from the from the time of the uh, when the slaves were brought to the interiors of, of, of America, the bulk of the slaves, should I say, until the word uh, 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 went out uh, that that the is you know who the Israelites were because you know there was a point where we all lost our our uh, our nationality. You know, so at that point, uh, after that 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 uh, period of servitude or slavery, that's when when the Lord started uh, waking. Uh, Israel back up at this point, you know, so that would so we're in the midst right now of, of all of that going on It says um, Now once once this this whole deal is finished and and Yahweh Shai uh, uh, Comes back with the angels and the chariots which are the so-called UFOs to destroy you devils and the missiles are shut off and all these wars that take place This is what's going to happen, you know after after the elect is sealed and when when uh, it's uh, the you know they implement the mark of the beast and people get chipped, you know this is what's going to take place. Verse seven. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. Now Michael represents the prince, the you know uh, underneath Yahweh Shai, that um, that's going to be leading the armies of of the Lord. You know uh, uh, underneath Yahweh Shai. Now the the dragon and his angels represents Esau and his military powers, you know, whether it be his uh, uh, fighter jets and whatever other uh, um, uh, instrument of war they have to defend themselves. That's what that represents. And, th and this war is going to take place in the heavens, you know, because they're going to be fighting against each other. They show you uh, uh, um, a, a little example of that in Independence Day when the fighter jets are fighting against the the mother you know the mothership as they call it mothership fathership uh and the uh, uh and the other uh, uh ships that came out from among that ship that were tearing up them uh, fighter jets yeah they weren't little green men from mars that's the spin they put on it yep. they were actually angels from the heavenly father angels led by Yahweh shai it says and prevailed not because you're not going to win even though you you have all this technology and the people of the earth, you know, there are certain nations that are afraid of you because you have this technology where you can wipe them off the face of the earth if you wanted to. When the Lord comes back, what you got is is, is nothing. He has a greater technology. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think you got the, your technology from? Yeah, exactly. It says, uh, neither was there place found anymore in heaven. Why? Because you're going to be taken out of your rulership. Yeah, like the Lord said in Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, he said, shall, shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it that's, right. that's like the saw magnifying himself against the person that uses the saw to cut so Esau, you ain't gonna win all right you can't beat something that created you that's right it says neither was their place found anymore in heaven because you're not going to rule anymore and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived the whole world who deceived the whole world you so-called white people did that man you edomites 
You deceive the whole entire world. That's why the whole world thinks that you're the most high, that you're his son, uh, Yahweh Shai, you know, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, that you're the Israelites, that you're the angels, that you're all these great people of, of history. You know, you've deceived the whole world into thinking that to where people are actually bowing down to you, to your image, thinking that they're paying reverence and homage to the heavenly father and his son. It says, uh, deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Meaning you and your military and your fighter jets and your nuclear missiles and your regular missiles and your guns and everything that you have, your instruments of war is all going to be cast down to the earth because you're going to be totally defeated. Yeah, it tells you in uh, Ezekiel, the 39th chapter, how it gives a period of time, seven months yep. uh, to burn the weapons of Esau, destroy his weapons. Yeah, somebody asked a question uh, concerning um, uh, John Hyrcanus um, forcing the Edomites to uh, to 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 um, follow the way of the Jews. That's why the Herodians that came out of Antipater, they married among the the Israelites, and they were actually thinking that they were Jews. All right, um, and this and this. Her, her Canis came out of the line of the Maccabees, which they were in rulership. They were Levites that were in rulership at that time. Um, it says, um, okay, if you go to, I'll give you the page in a minute, but the way I read, I just go, I don't spend money on books. If I can go on the web, I get it on the web, man. You know? Yeah, sometimes you just type in keywords and it pops up. Yeah, it says, um, okay, I, her, her canis uh, took upon him to compel those Idumians either to become Jews or to leave their country uh, deserves great consideration. I suppose it was because they had, and this is the footnote, had long ago been driven out of the land of Edom. And he see and and had seized on and possessed the tribe of Simeon, and all the 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 southern parts of the tribe of Judah, because you had other tribes mingled within the kingdom of Judah, which was the uh, peculiar inheritance of the whisperers of the true God without idolatry. As the reader may learn, it goes on to something else, but it mentions. It, it mentions uh, Hyrcanus and the uh, how they how they converted um, Esau to 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 be a Jew, and that would be in um, Antiquities of the Jews. Um, it says here, according to the Web Book uh, thirteen, all right, which is con uh, which contains the uh, well, it says from the death of Judas Maccabees to the death of Queen. Alexandria. So when you, like I said, when you go to the um, Josephus, all you got to do is go go to the period of time during the time of uh, Ju uh, Judas Maccabees and go through his his uh, that that line of the Maccabees. And when you come across the word uh, Her Hercanus, that's when it's talking about it. All right, but uh, but it, but it should be Ant Antiquities of the Jews uh, book. Um, a book 13. See, we get this stuff because we research it, man. And like I said, <clears throat> we're not going to spend money like the famous Fopi did. They got all those books. They used to have videos, the Prince Book Challenge. What the hell are y'all doing? What about the going out on the highways and the byways challenge? What about that? And y'all got all them books. You don't read them books no more because you thought you were so goddamn deep. But that's how you find it, man. And you don't, hey, we, I just put, put up the um, keyword. I put up, um, I brought up uh, the Geneva Bible of uh, 1560. And there, there, there was a 1560. That was the first uh, printing, I would say, and uh, 1599. <clears throat> now, look at what it says. If you go to. Um, Isaiah 34 and 5, and you go to it in the, in, the, in the King James. Go to Isaiah 34, verse 5 in the King James. But I'm going to read this out of Geneva. It says, For my sword shall be drunken in heaven, 
Behold, it shall come down upon Edom, even upon the people of my curse to judgment. Now read it in the King James. Now the Geneva is more accurate than the King James when it comes to this verse right here. So, so Dr. James White, you messed up again. You didn't gave us that Geneva. You got brothers actually reading quotes from the Geneva Bible. And then you had our uh, vocab alone. I'm gonna read it from the King James. Remember, you had the I'm gonna read it from the King James. So what's the so you're talking about translations? There's not that much difference. Isaiah 34 and 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. But in the Geneva Bible, it says Edom. So what's different? The word Idumia to Edom. And Edom is the proper word. So somebody go ahead. Come. Just want to check the comment board. All right. Um, this is back in Revelation 12. Revelation, not Revelations, Revelation 12 and um and 9. I'm sorry, 8. And prevailed not, neither was their face place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. In other words, he was cast out of his rulership. That's why Yahweh said, I have seen... Uh, Satan as lightning fall from heaven, meaning he saw the end of the world when Esau was 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 uh, gonna fall, because the scriptures say that Esau is the end of the world. So the Lord said, when these devils are ruling, that's when you know that the end of the world is coming. So who is in rulership right now? Esau is. So we're coming to the point, where, and the Lord gave him the technology to destroy themselves, which are the missiles. You know. So it says. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our power, once his devil goes down, and the power of his anointed, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power day and night. And these devils do be accusing us. Guys. Yeah, you uh, made the statement, uh, he was cast out, right? Here's an example of it, going back to the parable of uh, Lazarus and the rich man. It says, and... And he cried, Luke 16 and 24, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, which represents Israel, Israelites, that he may dip the tip of his finger in, in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And that rich man is talking about Esau, Edom, after they're cast out of the, their rulership. They're going right into slavery, and that's that flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. That's his blessing now that he's receiving. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. That's the curses we're receiving now. Esau is being blessed in this kingdom. We are being cursed. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted. That's in the kingdom. And thou art tormented. <laughs> so that's, that's it right there, man. That's... That's when Esau is going to be cast out, just like what you read. That's right. He's cast out of what? Out, out of rulership. And with that, we're going to say shalom, and uh, we may be up. We might we going down to the to the um the the, the camp to the speaking, and we may be live down there too. <laughs> so watch out for us. Hey, with that, I'm going to say shalom.